Greetings there. This is uh, Lane Freeman. I wanted to share with you how to use a super prompt. Super prompts are prompts that you can design that you can reuse over and over again and then just fill in the blank and it will walk you through on how to do a specific task. This super prompt I designed specifically for instructional designers. And this one is specifically related to designing a course module one at a time throughout our online course. And so the approach I took here was to design basically a wizard within the super prompt. And the user should only have to copy and paste this and it will guide them step by step. So a little bit about the super prompt. The first thing I wanted to do was identify the structure for a module. And so this structure has a hook, it has an introduction, a community builder, a module content, that's where it gets to the meat of the course module that the students are being trained on. Uh, then it's going to help you with a, a formative assessment. Uh, a campfire chat is what I call this. It's a classroom conversation where students can reflect on that together. And then finally, a re student reflection. Now, you can modify this uh, any way you see fit. So if you want to rename these parts, you can. If you want to add additional parts or remove parts, you can. That's the great thing about these super prompts. All that I ask is that if you use this prompt in a presentation, just give me a shout out. However, if you're just using this to design courses or you're sharing it with faculty or you're sharing it uh, with people around you, that's fine. I just ask if you're given a public presentation. Um, I think it's best practice to attribute those prompts from where they came from. Um, but I do not expect, again, you to put in when you design a module at the bottom of the module, this module was designed by. That's not the intent of this. Let's get started with how uh, we're going to use this. I've decided to use a sample history lesson. And so uh, the course title is the 20th Century Conflicts and Resolutions, the Learning Outcomes. And so you can see this in practice and how this would work. So I've got ChatGPT open to the side here. So all I'm going to do is copy and paste, and it's quite a bit of content. And hopefully by seeing this as an example, you can start designing your own super prompts. So I'm just going to copy this. I'll go ahead and maximize this and paste. Hit submit. And now it's going to follow the steps that I've designed in this super prompt. So the first thing it should do is welcome me and then tell me all the parts that, that we're going to address. So if you gave this to a faculty member and they wanted to start designing their own modules, it's kind of giving them that introduction of what we're going to accomplish throughout this module. I would like to clarify that I'm using a subscription to ChatGPT 4.0. However, you could use this in most large language models for free. However, they often limit how many interactions you can have at a sitting. And so with this, I will not run into a cap. But after about 40 conversations, most large language models will kick you out if you do not have this, a subscription. It's now going to ask you for the name of the course and the learning outcomes, which is why I have that sample sitting to the side here so we can test this in real time. So this is going to be a 20th century conflicts and resolutions course. And I'm just going to copy and paste these information here. So you'll know your instructors often have learning outcomes or learning objectives for each module, trying to model what that would look like. So now it will ask, it'll tell me that we are now going to work on hook. I've designed the super prompt to give me three choices for almost every component. Uh, so this one, I'm just going to say I want to go with the scenario, uh, the role playing scenario, which is number three. And also I've added that if I'm done with a particular part, I can just type in done with hook. You'll see that theme throughout done with hook, done with introduction. So I'm just going to type the number three here because that's what I want to do. And now it's going to give me the directions that I could copy and paste into the course, tweak it, modify it any way I see fit. So now I'm done with the hook. I'm going to type in done with hook. And now it's going to move us into the introduction portion. It's also going to give me three choices of what this would look like. So what I want to do with this one, just to make things easy, I'll press two. 
Okay, so excellent choice. It likes a text mess, text or image overview. It's giving me the steps on how to do that. I'm done with intro. Now it's going to help me with a, a community builder that relates to these learning outcomes. I like the debate partners. And remember, you're in the large language model, so you can still tell it what you want to do. So I could say, give me three more choices, and it would. But I'm going to go with two since I like that one. So I like those directions. And obviously, again, it's important that the content expert and the instructor play a vital role in this. And so they can modify that. They can tweak it. They can have an ongoing conversation about this module. And then when they're done, they can just type in done with CB for community builder. So now we're into the module content. I am not a history instructor and I, that is not my background. And so I'm just using this as an example. So what it's asking me to do is since learning count outcomes focus on these, um, some manageable lessons. Would you like assistance in drafting? So if I had an open educational resource that I was going to be citing throughout the course, um, in this instance, I'm actually going to use ChatGPT to help me do the research for me. Help me with the research. Now it's asking, does it? do you like the direction you, you'd like to go for this module? If so, I can refine it into lessons. Um, and I'm just going to focus on lesson one here. So I'm just going to type in lesson one. So the output here for lesson one, he gave me a learning objective, an introduction, a content breakdown. And remember, if I wanted to know more about the Polish corridor, I could do a deeper dive and ask the large language model to help me do that. And so I'm going to just keep scrolling down here. Again, the content expert is going to pick out what's best. I'm done with the content now. And it's going to take me to the formative assessment part, although it's already recommended a formative assessment type question. And so it said, all right, here's three choices again for the formative assessment. I can do interactive matching. I like how it already knows about H5P and Quizlet. I'm just going to, again, keep things simple. I'm going to go to number one with the multiple choice quiz. As you'll note, it has created questions for me. Um, again, the more you work with large language models, the more you'll realize that you can be better, have better questions by asking for Bloom's taxonomy level five and six questions or Casa's levels of questioning levels two and three. Uh, also, sometimes it's helpful for instructor to have the answers and feedback that goes along with this. So that's another little tip for creating questions. But now I'm done with the uh, formative assessment. And now it's going to move on to classroom conversation. So after everyone has had the introduction to the material, they've answered some questions. And now it's given me three options on how we can do this. And so in the video discussions, I'm a big fan of uh, VoiceThread. Uh, so I might would want to do number two using VoiceThread. So it's given me steps to put and build my voice thread and how the student instructions, the feedback. But now I'm done with this. So I'm going to do done with CC. And now it's going to go to the last part, which is the reflection. So it's given me three choices on types of reflections I could do. I'm just going to do a journal entry for our students in this module. And it quickly provided the journal prompt or submission. Uh, remember that you can have it write these questions at a specific lexile level or grade level. Just remember all those things you already know about Lawrence language models. And then I'm going to type in done with reflection. Now that we've gone through all seven steps, this time it will summarize what we did for each one of those. Uh, again, large language models can be very unpredictable on their output, and so you may get a different type of response at the end or throughout. Just keep in mind that the outputs vary from time to time, and if an instructor or you are designing a course that needs additional information, just provide it throughout.